What I find in, in training people for leadership, and I, I've had the privilege of doing this for 20 years or so, what I find is when I, I take someone, especially someone younger, it says, I want to learn about leadership, usually they want to jump right into the how-to. Tell me how to do leadership. How do you do it? And uh, my, my response usually is along the line of, whoa, 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 we'll get there. But before we ever get to the competency issue, before we ever get to the how do you do leadership, we need to start with who you are. And so we start with your convictions, your doctrinal convictions, your conviction about leadership. We'll move to the character of your life, and then we'll build on that. After we talk about who you are, then we'll build on what you do in leadership. And these will all be, Lord willing, from the Bible. So let's begin now on page one, the leader's convictions about leadership. The leader's convictions about leadership. J. Oswald Sanders, that book I recommend, Spiritual Leadership, says leadership is the ability of one person to influence others. How about dropping down to Ken Gangle? Uh, Dr. Gangle uh, has said that leadership is the exercise of one's spiritual gifts under the call of God to serve a certain group of people in achieving the goals God has given them toward the end of glorifying Christ a rather involved definition, but Dr. Gangle has actually given us aspects of leadership, giftedness and the calling of God and the people you're working with and where you're headed. Newt Larson, uh, Newt Larson pastors in Akron, Ohio, and I, I love his simplicity when he teaches. And Newt Larson has said, a leader is a person who, number one, knows where he's going, and number two, can get others to go with him. Here's a couple more. Dick Mayhew, leadership is knowing God's will, walking in it, and effectively soliciting others to follow. Or John Piper, who I know a lot of you love to listen to and read, knowing where God wants people to be and taking the initiative to use God's methods to get them there in reliance on God's power. That one, again, is a little more complete and a definition maybe that we should pay special attention to. Let's take that simple one, Newt Larson's. A leader is a person who knows where he's going and can get others to go with him. You know, if you picture the Christian life as a journey, as a trek, a hike, a leader is someone who's kind of out in front of the pack, and he's telling other people, you know, folks, where we're headed is over here. I believe that's where God wants us to go. Why don't you go with me? It's a very simple picture of leadership. A leader is someone who knows where he's going, and he can effectively involve other people in going with him toward that destination. Someone said one time that if you uh, think you're leading and you look over your shoulder and find out no one's following, you're not really leading, you're just taking a walk. You know, and there are people who think they're leading, but you look at their lives and you say, well, if you're leading, who's following? Leadership necessarily involves followers, that there are people who are being impacted by your life. So who's a leader? Who is a leader? Some people have positions of leadership, positions of leadership with accompanying relationships and responsibilities. Uh, what are some possibilities? Think very broadly here. Don't think too narrowly. Uh, think very broadly. What are some positions of leadership people might have? Some of you here today are here because, one reason you're here is because you have positions of responsibility in your business realm. There are people at your workplace who look to you to provide direction. Uh, just about every offering of the Biblical Leadership Academy, we have had educators in our group. Uh, people who have responsibilities in some sort of academic environment, from elementary school teachers on up to those who teach on the master's and doctoral level. Uh, people have responsibilities in academia, in the educational system uh, to lead. And for those of you that are in family situations, I hope you take seriously the responsibility to lead. I think that's going to be one of the most uh, personal, one of the most practical applications of your learning today in the Biblical Leadership Academy. How will it, this impact my home life? And we have the church. There are different ministries in the church of leadership, that of a pastor, an elder. Uh, some diaconal ministries require supervising other people and serving ministries. Uh, small group leaders, prayer group leaders, you know, we could go on and on even in the context of the local church uh, where there are leadership responsibilities. Some people have positions of leadership. Other people also have gifts for leading. 
Uh, not everyone who has responsibilities to lead is necessarily gifted in leadership, uh, but some people do have gifts for leading. And you'll find this in Romans chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. Paul said in that passage on gifts in Romans 12, we have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is leadership, let him govern diligently. And some of you are here and you're uh, relatively young, and you think, well, I think I have the gift of leadership, but I'm not sure yet. I have not had a lot of years of being tested and developed. I don't want you to be discouraged. I mean, especially if you're younger and you're looking at someone who's a generation or two generations older than you that has decades of experience in leadership, and you say, well, I don't have that kind of experience, so maybe I'm not a leader. You might be a leader in bud form. You might be a leader who's young, and, but the Lord's given you that gift. And I want to encourage you, 1 Timothy 4.4 4 reminds us that gifts can be developed. They can be cultivated. So don't uh, be discouraged if you're young. If you believe God's given you gifts of leadership, then test those gifts. Use those gifts for the glory of God. I would like to also remind you that everybody leads occasionally. And I talk to people sometimes to say, I don't have the gift of leadership. I don't bear any leadership responsibilities. What would be the point of me coming to something like the Biblical Leadership Academy and taking hours to learn more about leadership? Well, the truth of the matter is everybody leads occasionally. It depends on the providential situation God puts you in, um, needs, what's expected of you. I remember reading an illustration one time that reminds me so much of how leadership roles can change depending on the situation. That you might be in one situation and people are not expecting you to lead, but God puts you in a different situation and you are expected to lead. And this is a fictitious account, but what if? What if there was a church and uh, the pastor of that church said, we're going to have a missions conference. One of the members of that church is an airline pilot. And one of his regular routes that he flies is, is down to Belém in Brazil. And he says, you know, I was down in Belém one time and I met a tribal chieftain who came to Christ and he has a wonderful testimony. What do you say we bring up that Amazon tribal leader up to our church for a missions conference? And the pastor says, well, that would be wonderful. I trust your judgment. Let's see if we can fly him up here from Brazil, from the Amazon, and uh, we'll have him at our missions conference. So when you think about that missions conference and who's organizing it and who's leading the organization of that missions conference, you have a pastor, you have a pilot, and you have a chieftain. Who's the leader in organizing that missions conference? The pastor. In that case, you look at those three men and you say, he's the leader. He's organizing the missions conference. The pastor's the leader. Well, after the missions conference, the chieftain and the pastor just hit it off so well. And the chieftain said, I would love for you to come down to the Amazon and, and meet the people of my church. And so the pastor says, sure, we could do that. And so the pilot makes the arrangements to fly them down there. And so they get on the plane and the pilot's going to be the one who personally flies them down there. Now who's the leader as they fly down? Yeah, the pilot. And now the same three people, the same three people, but the situation has changed. And now the pilot is the leader. <clears throat> well, it's kind of sad to report, but the plane had troubles and Pilot had to crash land that plane in the Amazon jungle, but they all survived the plane wreck, and they climb out of the wreckage, and they're all still intact, and three of them are out there in the middle of the jungle, and they look at each other. Guess who the leader is now? <laughs> the guy who knows the jungle. Yeah, the chieftain is now the leader. And it's fascinating when you think of a fictitious account like that. The same three people, and yet depending on the situation, different ones take the lead. And so even if you're here today in the Leadership Academy and you're thinking, but, you know, I'm usually in situations where someone else leads, that may be true of your situation in the Lord's providence. But my hunch is sometimes you are looked at to lead. And so I want to encourage everyone here today uh, to learn everything you can about leadership. Some of you have currently positions of leadership. Some of you have gifts of leadership in addition to responsibilities, but everybody has the occasional time when he or she is expected to lead.